Hi, I'm Matt from Amazon Web Services, and in this short video we're going to take a look at using the infrastructure services provided by AWS from Android devices. Amazon Web Services provides a collection of scalable, easy-to-use building blocks for developers to build connected mobile applications. They include highly redundant storage with S3, the simple storage service, highly available databases with SimpleDB, messaging with queues and notifications, compute for hosting and analytics with the Elastic Compute Cloud, and monitoring through the CloudWatch Metrics service. All of these are available on demand via an API where you only pay for what you use. The AWS SDK for Android makes it easier for software developers to call AWS Web Service APIs directly from mobile applications. It's available as a free download from aws.amazon.com slash SDK for Android. In this video, we'll run through how to use it from your Android apps. Of course, once your app is ready for the prime time, Amazon can also help get it out to your customers through the Amazon App Store for Android. Android developers who submit an app to the Amazon App Store will receive a $50 promotional code to put towards their use of AWS products and services. In this video, we'll discuss a simple application that uses SimpleDB as a database. We'll run through how to get started with the AWS SDK for Android, walk through a real code example, and discuss the next steps when packaging your application for distribution on Amazon.com. So let's get started. To start using AWS services from Android, you will need to have the Android SDK installed and ready to use. We're also assuming that you have the Eclipse Android Developer Tools installed, and you'll need an Amazon Web Services account, which you can create for free at aws.amazon.com. You'll also need to sign up for SimpleDB, which again, you can do for free at aws.amazon.com slash SimpleDB. Just click the Sign Up Now button on the right-hand side of the page. Finally, you'll need to download the AWS SDK for Android itself, available from aws.amazon.com slash SDK for Android. The SDK comprises the libraries themselves, some code samples, and developer documentation. So with that, let's take a closer look at how to use the AWS SDK for Android with an example. To help demonstrate the SDK, I'll be using a very simple demo app for Android called Coffee, which collects coffee shop reviews on Android devices. The app allows users to submit new reviews, ratings and descriptions, and share those reviews with others. To do this, we'll store the reviews in Amazon SimpleDB. SimpleDB is a low-touch, highly available database which makes it easy to store, manage and query your data. With SimpleDB, you organise your dataset into domains and can run queries across all of the data stored in a particular domain. Domains are collections of items that are described by attribute value pairs. Here we have the Android project for the Coffee app in the Eclipse IDE. The first thing to do is to add the AWS SDK for Android library to the project. You can see here that the SDK ships with individual JAR libraries for each AWS service, along with combined libraries with and without debugging information. We'll use the full debug library and add it to the project's build path. We'll update the app's manifest to grant access to the internet, save it, and for the purposes of the demo, add our AWS security credentials as a properties file. The access key and secret key provided here will be used to authenticate your request to SimpleDB. You can also see that we set the name of the SimpleDB domain here as a property. This is really for demonstration purposes only. For more information on security credentials and mobile devices, read the article at this address. With the credentials in place, let's jump back to the main Android activity class, which simply displays the app's main menu. From here, users can add a new review or read existing reviews. The Add Review activity displays a simple form which collects the coffee shop name and description as strings and the rating as a float. We then call the Save method on the Review class, which does the actual work of saving the review to SimpleDB. Let's take a look. Here you can see the Stubbed Out Review class. It doesn't do much yet, but we'll flesh out these methods in a moment. There are also some methods to load the properties file and some accessor methods for the review name, rating and description. It's here we'll make our first use of the AWS SDK for Android. We'll define a private Amazon SimpleDB object, 
which is used to make all requests to the Simple DB service. Then we'll add a convenience method which will instantiate a new Amazon Simple DB object if one doesn't already exist. You can see here that we pass in the credentials from our properties file and return the Amazon Simple DB object. We'll then use this instance in our save method. The first thing to do is to create the Simple DB domain, which is non destructive and won't raise an error if the domain already exists. Then create an array list of attributes before adding our first attribute to our new item. This is the name of our coffee shop. We do the same thing for the rating and the description, and then call the putAttributes method, which adds the attributes to an item in SimpleDB in the cloud. So, with just a handful of commands, we're now making use of SimpleDB's highly available data store from an Android device. Next, let's look at reading data back from SimpleDB. Our app has a very simple activity to display the coffee shop names in a list. And you can see here that we again abstract the work into the review class, this time the getReviews method. Here we create a new SimpleDB select request, and you can see a familiar query statement selecting all item names from the domain. We then store the results of this select statement into a list and iterate over the list to build an array of strings which we return to the Android list view to display to the user. Although we're just requesting all items from the domain in this case, SimpleDB offers a range of flexible ways to query data within a domain. You can read more about that in the documentation on our website. Finally, we'd like a way to display the full review on the device after a user taps on a name. We have an on-click handler in our list activity which will pass the selected name as part of the intent when moving to the next activity called show review. We then use that information to retrieve a single item from SimpleDB using the review class. We create a get attribute request with the domain and the review name and call get attributes to issue that request to SimpleDB. Next, we create a simple hash map with the attribute value pairs from the review item and then create and return a new instance of the review class. This object is then used to display the information on the device. And there you have it an Android app connected to a highly available database from a mobile device in just a few minutes. And so on to some next steps. There are a number of important factors to keep in mind when dealing with security credentials on a mobile device, and you can read more about that on a great article on the AWS website. I'd also encourage you to explore the other features of the AWS SDK for Android and the AWS services it supports, and finally, you can use the Amazon App Store for Android to sell your finished app on Amazon.com. If you haven't already signed up, head over to developers.amazon.com to join the Amazon App Store's developer program, where you can upload your apps for sale. And don't forget, for a limited time, if you submit an app to the Amazon App Store, you'll receive $50 worth of Amazon service credits, which we'll send out via email at the end of each month. If you'd like to know more about AWS, our services, pricing, SDKs, and features, head over to aws.amazon.com. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line on matthew.amazon.com. Thanks again.